Mecklenburg Correctional Center, an inescapable holding made in 1976 to hold criminals on death row, was put to the test in 1983 by the Bridley brothers and their inmates. Being put on death row usually means that you pretty much have no kind of escape. But that didn't stop a group of six ruthless serial killers from plotting a scheme like no other. In this video, we're taking a look at the most elaborate scheme to escape, Death Row. Linwood Briley, a criminal convicted of murdering six people, was kept in the Mecklenburg Correctional Center until his death sentence. The only way he could avoid his sentence was by escaping the inescapable Mecklenburg Correctional Center. While laying in his cell one night, Linwood came up with the idea to escape the prison. In the morning, he meets up with his brother James Briley and tells him about the plan. James agrees to be part of it, and they start meeting up with other inmates. All the inmates in the cell block agreed to the plan and started their preparations for the escape. Linwood Briley, James Briley, Lem Tuggle, Derek Peterson, Earl Clanton, and Willie Jones were all incarcerated and serving time on death row for different reasons. But the one thing that united all of them was the fact that they wanted to escape, which they all eventually did. But how did that happen? It all started when the prisoners, who clearly had a keen eye for detail, started noticing that the guards at the correctional facility were rather lax about the security protocols there. Maybe it was because they believed in the prison security and escape-proof design too much to always be on their toes. So the six men banded together and decided to use that to their advantage. Every single day, they would observe the guards and note down their routines in great detail until they had every single thing mapped out, from food runs to bathroom breaks. Based on their observations, the guards had become complacent and careless and didn't notice any suspicious movements of the inmates. This flaw of the guards allowed them to prepare their weapons without being noticed. For their weapon, they gathered blades and metal pieces from the landscaping equipment. They made sharp daggers to attack the guards and make them captive. Since the guards were lazy and complacent, Linwood and his inmates managed to hide the weapon without them noticing. They easily hid these sharp daggers in their cells. This blunder of theirs led to one of the biggest catastrophes in prison history. Then, on the evening of May 31st, 1983, they decided to initiate their plan of escape for months and months of planning. They were walking back to the cells after after their outdoor activities when they noticed that the security guard wasn't paying attention to them. It started off with Earl Clanton stepping into the guard's restroom while it was empty. Now, the restroom actually had direct access to the control room that controlled the cell doors. So after hiding and waiting for everyone to leave, Clanton could now easily press a button, open all the doors, setting his partners free. On the other hand, James Briley was working on his leg of the mission, which was to ask a guard in the control room to bring him a book from another prisoner who was entirely across his side of the prison. In. Riley asked nicely, and the guard somehow left the control room to fulfill the prisoner's seemingly innocent request. And as soon as he left, Landon made a dash for the control room and opened the doors to all the cells in the facility. And of course, chaos ensued as soon as that happened, with the guards being left baffled as to what was happening. With the prisoners outnumbering the guards by a huge percent, a huge brawl was initiated and plenty of guards were wounded, or even worse, killed in cold blood. After a while, all the internal guards were completely helpless, and the inside of the prison was taken over over by the prisoners in a rebellion-like situation. Only, no one on the outside knew what was going on inside. Coming back to our six masterminds, the next challenge for them was to be able to go outside and escape the heavily guarded external boundaries of the correctional facility. For the next plan, they stripped the guards of their clothes and disguised themselves as the guards. They are more guards outside. We have to get rid of them if we want to escape, said Linwood. We can target them one by one by luring them inside, added James. James took the walkie-talkie and said, some of the inmates are getting getting out of hand inside the cell. We need backup. The guard answered the call and moved towards the center. Upon reaching there, he saw a prisoner dressed up as a guard, he moved a step back and tried to inform his inmates. Before he could do so, Linwood Briley stops him and makes him captive. By following this trick, they managed to get rid of four to five guards, but that wasn't enough. They had to come up with another plan. This is where they used the captured guards inside and forced them to call the external guards and report the presence of a bomb. This sent the entire correctional center into panic and a bomb disposal van was soon sent into the prison. The team of six inmates managed to grab a hold of the bomb detonating squad. They then beat the men up, stole their uniforms, and used their helmets to cover their faces. Linwood quickly rushed to another room and brought a TV. He then placed that TV on a stretcher and placed a sheet over it. We'll be faking a bomb threat, said Linwood. The six members, Linwood Briley, James Briley, Earl Clanton, Liam Tuggle, Derek Peterson, and Willie Leroy Jones, disguised themselves as guards. They rushed towards the gates and slowly 
every gate started to open. Within no time, they were out of Mecklenburg, they van ready for their escape. They hopped into the van and drove as fast as they could away from Mecklenburg. However, after the six men had escaped, they got into an argument with each other about where to go next. They eventually split up as the Briley brothers wanted to go to Pennsylvania, but Clanton and Peterson disagreed. Linwood stomped the vehicle, and they both got out at Warrenton, and the rest continued their journey to Pennsylvania. Clanton and Peterson were roaming around the streets of Warrenton when a cop recognized them due to the alert. He calls in for backup and arrest Clanton and Peterson. The remaining four members switched the van for a pickup truck and continued on their journey. After a while, Linwood and James Briley were dropped off at their uncle's garage in Philadelphia. Tuggle and Jones continued their journey to Canada. After reaching Vermont, their car ran out of gas just 20 miles away from Canada. You stay in the car. I'm going to get some gas, Tuggle said, and rushed to the city. He robbed a department store owner and took the money to buy gas for the car as he had no money on him. While leaving the store, a policeman recognizes him and arrests him. Jones realizes that Tuggle has been arrested and he calls his mom for the last time before turning himself in. Four out of six members have been arrested till now and only the Briley brothers are now free. The police suspected their uncle, so they tapped his phone. One day, the Briley brothers decided to contact an old acquaintance. The FBI traced their phone and it was in the uncle's garage. The cops barged into the garage and arrested the Briley brothers for good now. This was the end to the insane escape with all six rebels being brought back to a different prison with constant surveillance and increased security to make sure that they never even thought of doing such a thing ever again. In the end, all the escapees were eventually executed by the state one by one. In October 1984, Linwood Briley was executed. Six months later, James Briley followed his brother to the electric chair. In that same month, Earl Clanton was also executed with the electric chair. Six years later, in 1991, Derek Peterson was executed, followed by Willie Jones in 1993. Lastly, the final member of Death Row, Mem Tuggle, was executed in the Death Row chamber. This was the end of the group that escaped Death Row. That's a wrap for the most elaborate scheme to escape Death Row. Do you think that the plan was doomed to fail from the start? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. See you next time with something new, but until then, goodbye.